I found everything in the film to be kind of cookie cutter, if I'm being honest. It's a movie that felt safe. It's a movie that felt like it was going to coast on the reputation of the original film, use these characters and use this character, Mulan, who's very popular, uh, and, and kind of stage the same kind of historical battle epic that we've seen many, many times before. And I was actually kind of surprised how uninspired the film was, given the fact that it looks so beautiful. And, and Nikki Carroll, the director, has brought such a great style and such a great sensibility to the look of the film. This is a PG-13 movie that feels a lot more like PG. For example, there is no blood in the entire film, not a single drop. Now, I'm not saying this movie should be bloody because that would be ridiculous. But there are plenty of examples where they do show blood in PG-13 movies without going overboard. But instead they don't show any in this movie, which makes certain scenes look a little weird. You know that scene in a movie where a character gets hit by something and then he or she reveals a bloody hand? That happens in this film minus the blood, which makes that shot look a little silly. You've got drums. You've got riding into battle. You have actual battle tactics. I've studied battle tactics and they actually have, you know, you know, not in depth, but it was really cool to see them actually utilizing them. Far more forces in the actual film uh, that have been teased uh, uh, leading up to its release. There's magic. Gong Lee, by the way, is super cool. We'll be talking about her more in just a moment. And Wire Foo. One of you asked me, you said, Grace, is there Wire Foo in this movie? And I said, there's Wire Foo everywhere, baby. And that's the truth. One of the great things that this movie is able to do is the fact that it not only brings us those new elements, but it maintains the story that we know and love and strikes a really good balance of nostalgia, which is something that I mentioned earlier, and some plot points that at first you're hesitant. This film heavily revolves around Chi, uh, which is not something that was as prevalent in the original, but it makes a lot of sense where they go in this story. And if you look at it from a live action standpoint, okay. They're able to do some of the things that they do in this film because of the explanations that we get at the beginning of the movie. So even though it's not something from the original, they were able to add that in and make a difference at the end of the day. And I appreciate that. I respect that. I like the fact that our director here, uh, she's able to make these changes, but not, uh, for the most part, I think, uh, take people completely off board with those changes made. I am extremely impressed with the work that Nikki Caro delivers here. And if this movie doesn't put her name on every big franchise director shortlist out there, I do not know what will. I wouldn't have minded an extra 20 minutes or so of the movie to really sit with certain decisions that Mulan makes and also maybe to beef up some of the supporting characters in the film as well. But I do think it is very easy to see how Caro's eye behind the lens and also Liu's very natural screen presence here really did make the absolute most of what we do get in the final film. This is an absolutely stunning production. I'm all for going a different direction, but the choices they made oof, didn't help at all. So to start with this, I think it's important. I have some notes here I want to go through, but look, this film doesn't have music right that's a, a thing that i know a lot of people were upset about they're like well you, how do you do it without the music and honestly i thought yeah you could totally do it without the music you're gonna have great acting great you know cinematography great direction great script it gets into the characters more give them more dialogue you don't need the music they needed the music because the problem of what they did is they removed the music and by removing the music they didn't replace it with anything to give the characters character development and it really will show you the importance and the brilliance of Disney music in Disney musicals, especially during that sort of age of the 90s and so on. Gone are the songs as well as the talking dragon voiced by Eddie Murphy. I know, I know, I miss him too. Instead, this is a sprawling adventure epic which seems a lot more influenced by the classic Chinese wuxia genre than Disney animation, albeit given a thoroughly Western spin for both better or worse. McFarlane USA director Nikki Caro works with her biggest budget to date and sure enough she's made an entertaining tentpole for the whole family. Gorgeously shot with some of the most beautiful cinematography in recent memory courtesy of DP Mandy Walker, Mulan pays tribute to the classics of Chinese cinema, particularly the films of King Hu, with his most famous leading lady Cheng Pei Pei of Come Drink With Me having an amusing cameo as the village matchmaker who disapproves of Mulan's headstrong nature. 
Since we're on negatives, I do want to talk about a few things in the film I don't really like. I'm fine with Eddie Murphy as Mushu. In fact, I like him quite a bit. But his appearance and the weird jokey tone with the ancestor ghosts just feels so jarring. The first 10 to 15 minutes of this movie are really good and very dark. Mulan cutting off her hair and running off into the night, stealing her father's armor. It's so fucking epic. And then all of a sudden there's this little red dragon and a ghost that lost his head and it feels so Disney all of a sudden. Where a lot of this movie feels like it's trying not to be Disney. In fact, it's one of the first movies, I think maybe the first movie, where the Disney princess kills people. So obviously the movie explores warfare as well. There's some really, really dark stuff in the film. The score in this film is so beautifully done. I am like so obsessed with it. I want to listen to it on repeat. It is, it is just so stunning. Um, and they did such a good job of building the songs from the original animated movie into these epic scores that could play underneath scenes. Um, you know, this movie, obviously, if you've seen the trailers, they're doing a lot of different things. They changed a bunch of characters. They don't have Mushu anymore. Uh, and there's also a witch character uh, who fights for the bad guys. And uh, I wasn't sure how that was going to play out, especially because we are all so used to um, the animated film and knowing the story from that. But let me tell you, I think that's the thing that was one of the most exciting things for me was the fact that they were able to bring new elements to this story. Things that were not in the animated original, yet still pay homage and almost hit beat for beat every moment that was from the animated film. Because this film is impactful. It is jaw dropping, it is redefining, and it is absolutely an exhilarating spectacle. Of course, Mulan is about a young Chinese maiden who disguises herself as a male warrior. While this change gives Mulan a juicy source of conflict, since she's spent her life trying to hide her power so she doesn't dishonor her family, until her deception allows her to embrace who she truly is, this mythical force also undermines Mulan's position as a hero who succeeds based on courage, determination, and natural ability, as she did in the original. That unfortunately turns what was an inspiring underdog story into a kind of superhero origin tale, which isn't a deal breaker, but it's a story we've seen plenty of times before. No, no, please, please. Let me just kill one. Okay. One more, one more, please. Let me kill one more. One more, one more. One more. Okay, one more, one more. Oh. I didn't reload. 